But during this season of Advent, we've been talking about Christmas surprises and how uh, various characters of the Christmas story have, have been surprised by an angelic visitation. Well, you know, one of, the, one of the surprises about the Christmas story is who it is that God chose to engage, who it was that, that God chose to, to make a part of the Christmas story. You know, we started talking about Zachariah and Elizabeth, and maybe they were the most likely ones to, to be a part of the Christmas story because Zachariah was a priest. You know, he was a, a religious person, a holy man of God, and, and certainly that's who, who God would choose to, uh, to prepare the way for, for his son. But Zachariah and, and his, his wife Elizabeth, they were, were old. They were beyond childbearing years, and, and they had never been able to, to have a child. And yet, God chose to use them. There would have, could have been a, a younger priest, a, a younger priest with a, a younger wife that might have been a more likely candidate to, to give um, birth to, to John the Baptist. But Zechariah and, and his wife Elizabeth were the ones that, that God had chosen. You know, it seems that God often acts when all hope seems to be lost. And in the case of, of Zechariah and Elizabeth, all hope had been lost that they would ever have a, a child, but God chose to use them in the Christmas story in a miraculous way. From a human perspective, Mary and Joseph were the least likely people to, to be chosen to, uh, to be the earthly parents of, of the Son of God. They lived in the town of, of Nazareth, a, a small and insignificant town. You know, as Jesus started his public ministry, there was a, a guy by the name of Nathaniel that had been invited to, to come and follow Jesus. And, and as he was asking questions about Jesus and was told that, that he came from Nazareth, you know, Nathaniel's response was, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was, was not, a, not a good place to, to be from, was certainly not a place that you would think that, that God would choose inhabitants of Nazareth to, to bear his son. You know, Mary and Joseph were from very poor families. Joseph had to, to work for a, a living, and, and surely if God was sending his son into the world, he would want to send him into a, a family of, of privilege, not, through a, not into a family of poverty and, and want. In today's scripture, we, we find that, uh, the, that the first to receive the message of the baby born in Bethlehem were shepherds. These sheep herders were out in the field at night, and it said that an angel of the Lord appeared to them. It says that the glory of the Lord shone round about them. I love this picture that depicts the angelic visitation to the shepherds and that idea of the glory of the Lord shining around them. Now, this evening at the um, the 11 o'clock candle lighting service, we're going to be lighting the, the white candle in the center of the Advent wreath, the, uh, the Christ candle. And as we light that Christ candle, it's going to represent that, that Christ is the light of the world. And even as the angels are, are visiting, or as the angel is visiting the shepherd, the, this idea that, that uh, Jesus is the light of the world, and, and uh, the, the disciple John tells us that uh, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. You know, there's other stories in, in Scripture, uh, in the book of Acts, when, when uh, Peter's in, in jail and, and an angel comes and, and is going to, to release him. It says that the, the cell was filled with light. On Saul, when, when he was on the road to Damascus and it, at his conversion, it, it says that a bright light shone upon him. It seems that there are stories in the Bible that as God encounters people, that, that there is a light representing that, that God is light, that Jesus is the, the light of the world. Now, I'm not uh, aware of too many people that have had encounters with God that, that have had this, uh, the, this experience of a, of a bright light shining, but, but that seems to be the experience of some people in the pages of, of Scripture. As I reflect uh, upon the, the people in the, the Christmas story that, that God chose to use, I, I see a, a common thread in the people that God chose to use. And, and that common thread is that they were each willing to be used by God. 
They were willing to make themselves available to accomplish God's purposes. You know, the, the shepherds in, in the Christmas story, they were, they were surprised by, by the angel's visit as the angel appeared to them in, in the field. The, the scripture reading said that an, an angel appeared and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Well, this, this uh, angelic encounter, this bright light out in the middle of the field where the shepherds were, were grazing their sheep, you know, it certainly got their attention. You know, this morning scripture tells us that, that they were terrified. And I believe that it was probably a, a natural response. You know, often when an angel visits someone, the, the first thing that's recorded that the angel says is, do not be afraid. Well, you know, with the shepherds, they were unlikely characters to, to get this, this message that, that God's son had been born. You see, the shepherds, they were, they were outcasts. You know, they were, were not welcomed into to the place of worship. You know, certainly you would think that God would deliver the, the message of, of his son being born to, to the religious leaders. But instead, he delivered the message to, to the shepherds who, who were outcasts. You know, one of the reasons was that they were always out with the, the sheep. And, and, you know, tending sheep, living in the, the fields was not, uh, was not a clean place to be. And so the shepherds were, were considered unclean because of the job that they did, and so they weren't welcome into to the place of worship. And yet it was those people who were not welcomed among the religious folks that God chose to, to first deliver the message. Well, as they had this, this angelic encounter, the angel of the Lord responded by saying, do not be afraid. You know, last week we, you know, I reviewed or, or talked about some of the signs of confirmation that God had given characters in the, the Christmas story. You know, Zechariah was, was speechless when, when the angel appeared to, to him. And when Mary you know, found out that she had been chosen by God, the first thing that she did was, was to go and, and visit her relative Elizabeth to see if it was true that she was really six months pregnant. And Joseph, when, when he had a dream that God confirmed what he was to, to do, not to, to quietly divorce Mary as his wife, but, but rather that, that he was to take her as a wife, you know, God was, was giving each of them a sign. Well, what about the shepherds? What was their sign? The angel said that they would find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Now, the shepherds experienced the, the message from one angel, and then it says that there was a whole company of, of, of angels that, that were lifting their voices in praise to God. And when the, the angel left, or the, the angels, the company of angels left, uh, the story tells us that the shepherds did not hesitate. They went to to Bethlehem to confirm what the angel had told them. They went to Bethlehem to see the baby in a manger. Now, I've never experienced an, an angelic visitation like the, the shepherds experienced. Actually, I've never experienced an angelic visitation that I know of. But, you know, the, when the shepherds got word they didn't hesitate. They, they went to Bethlehem to, to confirm this message of, of the child. You know, as I, as I think about the, the fact that the, the, um, the shepherds dis, didn't hesitate, I, I wonder why is it that we sometimes hesitate if we sense God's prompting or, or God's leading in our life? You know, there have been times in, in my life when I've sensed God's prompting or, or, or leading and, and saying yes to God has, has, uh, has, has changed directions of my life that, that has affected me for decades. Other times I've sensed that, that God is leading or prompting me to do something in, in a moment that really doesn't have any long-lasting effect in my life, but yet it's still responding to his call, responding to his promptings, doing his will. But unfortunately, 
all too often when, when we experience God's prompting or leading in our lives, we hesitate. Well, why do we hesitate when God is prompting us? Why do we hesitate when the Holy Spirit is leading us? Well, I believe that one of the reasons that we, we hesitate is because we want to be sure. We want to be sure that we're hearing God right, and certainly if, if we're making a decision that is, is going to impact our, our future, going to impact decades of our life, we want to make sure that we've got the, the message right. We want to make sure that we're, we're hearing God right. I believe a, another reason that we hesitate to, to say yes to God is that we feel like in saying yes to God, we're afraid that we're going to, to lose control. We're afraid that God's going to call us to do something that, that we're going to hate. He, he's going to send us someplace that, that we want, don't want to go. But, but actually what happens when we say yes to God's prompting in our life, he's actually leading us to a, to a place that we're experiencing what it is he's created us, who he's created us to, to be from, from the very beginning. You know, when we say yes to God, it's not an issue of us losing control, but it's giving control over to God, and he leads us in places that bring greater fulfillment in our life than we could ever experience on our own. Another reason that we sometimes hesitate is because it may cost us something. It may cost us time, or, or it may cost us money. We may hesitate because of, of what others may think. You know, if I help someone who is unpopular, if I reach out to someone who, who others look down on, what will others think of me? You know, sometimes we may hesitate because it might inconvenience us. You know, we're all so busy. We all have, you know, have very little margin in our life. We have extra time. And, and if we respond to, to God's prompting, we may get ourselves wrapped up in a mess that's going to take more time than then, and, and I already don't have enough time to get everything done that, that I need to. There's, there's any number of reasons why we may hesitate. There may be any number of reasons why we may hesitate, but the shepherds didn't hesitate. It says that as soon as the angel left them, they went to, to find this child that they were told about. They found Mary and Joseph just as the angel had told them. And when they arrived in the in the stable, they undoubtedly told Mary and Joseph the story of the angels. And, and in, in verse 19, it, it says, But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now, it's been over nine months when, she, when the angel has visited Mary, and, and Mary has said to the angel, May it be with me as, as you, you have said. You, know, you would think that in Mary's, Mary saying yes to, to God in, in that moment, that that's all she needed for the rest of her life. But actually, I think Mary, like most of us, we need ongoing confirmation. We need ongoing signs, ongoing encouragement that, yes, we're, we're hearing God right. You know, Mary had the angelic visitation, but then she went to see uh, her, her relative Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was indeed in her sixth month of pregnancy, like the angel had said, a, a confirmation that the angel's message was true. As Mary arrived at, at uh, Elizabeth's house, uh, Elizabeth said that the, the baby leaped inside of her. The, the baby uh, kicked her and, and you know, at that point was responding to, to this special one who had come into their presence, this special one who was carrying the Son of God in, in her womb. You know, I believe that a, another sign was when, um, when Joseph changed his mind, when, when Joseph went from believing that he was just going to quietly divorce uh, Mary to, to taking her as, as his wife. I believe it was a, a sign that was an encouragement to Mary that, yes, she was on the path and, and God was, was going before her on the way. You know, when the, when the shepherds came to, uh, to, to see the, the Christ child, as they told the story, and it says that Mary pondered these things in her heart, again, it was another sign, it was another affirmation that God was at work. I don't know if Mary kept a diary or any sort of a journal, but I have a feeling that throughout Jesus' life, there may have been all sorts of instances in which Mary recognized that the hand of God was at work. And even as Mary was, was present for Jesus' crucifixion, 
You know, how she must have been gripped with grief and sorrow and, and was struggling at that point. I almost wonder if she didn't recall some of these affirmations that, that God had given her, these things that she had been pondering for so many years, recognizing that even as he died upon the cross, it was fulfilling the very purpose for which he had been born into this world. You know, in my own experience, you know, when I say yes to, to God, I, I find that there are times that he continues to give me affirmations. There, there are times that he continues to, to give me signs and, and encouragement of recognizing, yeah, I'm on, I'm on the right path, I'm on the right course. You know, sometimes in, in ministry when, when I get discouraged or, or you know, face challenges, you know, the Holy Spirit reminds me of, of that call to, to ministry, and, and that call is what can keep me going in, in the face of, of difficult times and in the, the face of challenges. I want you to, to recognize uh, one more thing about the shepherds, and that is seeking the Savior plus finding the Savior equals being changed forever. For the shepherds, as they sought the Savior and found the Savior, their lives were changed forever. Now, the shepherds returned to the field. The shepherds went back to, to keeping the, the sheep. They returned to their ordinary jobs, but they had been changed. When they returned, they were glorifying and, and praising God for the things that, that they had experienced. They went out and they were, were telling others what they had witnessed, what they had seen. They were, they were spreading the word about what God had done and what God was going to do. God has a history of doing the extraordinary through ordinary people who are willing. This morning, the question that I would ask you is, are you willing? Are you willing to be used by God to accomplish his extraordinary purposes in the world in which we live. Let us pray. Lord, during this Christmas season, as we sense your Spirit's promptings, may, may we not hesitate, but like the, the shepherds, may, be, may we be willing to, to follow. May, like the shepherds, may we be willing to, to do what what you lead us to do. Lord, may you use us as ordinary people to accomplish your plan and your purposes in the world in which we live. Lord, in this day, we offer ourselves. In this day, we say, I'm willing. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.